March Madness is in full effect for one San Diego basketball team. That team? The San Diego City College team. The Knights are in the Elite Eight. In a state playoff game last night, SDCC beat Riverside 113-81 to behind a career-high 39 points for Darian McLean. That's 14 straight wins for the team. Their overall record is now 28-5. and So in the state quarterfinals, SDCC will play Yuba College. That game is Thursday night in Livermore. The Knights are now three wins away from a state championship. You know, being able to cut down the nets at home, going undefeated at our home court, that was an unbelievable experience. Of course, like we all knew that, yeah, like we can get there, we can get to the NBA, we can do it. But then again, we stayed focused on the on the motive and the job. And then once we got to the Elite Eight, it was like, oh man, another big step. Like now we're even way more hungry. Like our stomachs got bigger. Like, yo, let's keep filling it up, keep filling it up, let's keep doing it. The Knights took March Madness into new heights in San Diego. And after cutting down the nets in their last home game, the team was ready for the next challenge. We knew that there was only one other Knights team that had been to the actual state tournament. And so once we made that happen, we just felt good going up to the state tournament that, you know, now we can just take it further than any other team in San Diego's done. You talk about your goal so much and you finally start seeing it happening. It just it's, it gives you goosebumps because you don't know what's going to happen, but you always want to stay ready and prepared. An old coach, a friend of mine, you know, told me, he's like, Mitch, you know, you've been there before. Don't, don't just be happy to go there. Go, go win it. And so, you know, that's a cliche. Everybody's heard that before. But it re that really resonated with me. So I wasn't, I think in years past, I was worried about the letdown that the kids might have if they didn't get it done. And so I, I didn't concern myself with that. I was just all in on the moment. I said, no, we're, guys, we're going to win this. And I wanted them to have that mindset. But in the state quarterfinals, their mindset to win was immediately tested. Throughout the season, the Knights were hungry to win, but they weren't the only ones. They shoot it over 40% from three. About five players that average in double figures. Early steal. Back the other way. Laying it up and laying it in for Yuba. Josh Dat. Yuba trying to start to pour it on early here. About a minute in, she from deep. That's good. It's a tell, Michael. <laughs> Ruaro, make that nine early. 11 nothing off the bat for Yuba. To start the state tournament, we're down 11 0 to Yuba. I mean, welcome to the Elite Eight, you're down 11 0. Hard drive blocked away by Shive. The Knights received the early playoff punch from Yuba College, but after a timeout, the team settled down and started to find the basket. Freshman guard Wonder Smith tied the game at 20 with a big three. The Knights were able to erase their 11th point deficit and slowly found their groove as a family on the court. And with a big three pointer from freshman forward Robert McCoy, San Diego took the lead. And continuing his hot performance from the previous game, sophomore Darian McLean also found his shot and help the Knights come back and take the lead going into the half. They would take a two-point lead. There's a foul Three call. point shot is good, and a foul on Jackson, and Darian McLean is unconscious from deep. With only a five-point lead, the Knights knew it wasn't going to be an easy road to achieve their ultimate goal, but unfortunately for Yuba College, the Knights were not intimidated by the challenge. To be honest, we faced that type of adversity all year in practice, in other games, um, so when we were down, we didn't, we never really worried. We just like, just pick it up. That's all we gotta do, just pick it up. You know what I'm saying? We came out lots of days ago, yeah, in, in, in the first game, but we always, we just knew, like, yo, it does not matter. We just gotta get a couple buckets, get a couple stops together, and we back in. The tables quickly turned for the 49ers. Steal after steal after steal, and San Diego found themselves up by 17. Yuba College couldn't find their rhythm and turned the ball over a total of 22 times, which the Knights converted into 30 points. Another turnover, it's a steal. And a Sophomore layup. guard Marcus Brumsey recorded three steals, and McCoy had five with 10 defensive rebounds. The struggles continue point blank for you, but McCoy back the other way. Has it tapped out of his possession by Ruaro, but it's wow. And with a team high of 23 points from McLean, the Knights got the 85-69 victory to advance into state semifinals. These guys didn't disappear. You know, it's very easy to come in beating on your chest, but to come out and go down 
and then to continue to fight back to stay in that game and end up winning was big time. Coach didn't say win or lose, enjoy it. Nah, he was like win or go home. Like you either win, you continue to play, or you go home and sit at home. So like he gave us reality. So you know what I'm saying? We we knew that like we had to win because we lost is going to be miserable and all that. So. You know, Coach, he always was intense. It was never like, oh, if you win, if we lose, it's okay. We never had that mentality. For the first time in team history, the Knights were in the Final Four. The team was just one game away from the state championship game, but in order for them to move closer to their ultimate goal, the Knights had to get past the defending state champions, City College of San Francisco. Early technical versus Yuba, but was able to rebound and play very well. Inside for two, and that's a nice score for Alex Wilborn. San Francisco off the mark thus far. Copeland from deep, step back three. One on one versus Stedman. Hook shot, gets a man up in the air. Hook shot, good to go for Alex Wilborn. Yonescu hesitates, fires from three, and buries it. It was clear that both teams wanted to get to the state championship game, but throughout the course of the first half, it was clear one team was struggling. Wilborn on the drive, kicks it outside, long three for Smith, that's short. Long the Knights were not in the same rhythm from three-point territory, which made it hard for them to grab the lead. The only thing keeping the Knights in the game was their defense. But in the last minutes of the first half, San Diego's defense began to break down from an offensive surge from the Rams. It was a taste of their own medicine, as the Rams were the ones knocking down threes and finding the basket with ease. Terrific backdoor cut again. In a matter of minutes, San Francisco broke out with a 10-point lead going into the half. Uh, but my biggest concern with that, our group was toughness. You know, are we going to be tougher for those teams that come out and want to take a shot at us? Are we going to be able to answer the bell every time? And it was just like, okay, this is a, the, the biggest deficit we've ha probably had at halftime the whole year. Like, how are we going to come back from this? Takes it back to Copeland, wide open three, trailing the... The Knights came out flat in the second half, and the Rams continued to drain their shots, which gave them a comfortable double-digit lead early in the second. I came out after halftime, and we were down, and I was like... I remember looking to whoever was on my right and left, I want to say maybe it was Romario, and I was like, damn, bro, shit's getting ugly. The defending state champions had us down 15 points, and our guys, they didn't get rattled, they just said, all right, we, we got to make a couple plays. The shots were not falling, but the defense for the Knights began to tighten up. A steal by freshman guard Robert Taylor gave Darius Lee a surge to the basket. Free throw no good. Wilson fighting for the carom. Darius Lee couldn't knock down the free throw, but with a surge of energy on the defensive side, the Rams turned it over and freshman guard Runder Smith took it all the way back for the layup. Turn over the other way, behind the back dribble, left-handed layup, up and good, Wander Smith. Deficit in the single digits now, 54-45, here come the Knights. Suddenly now, the Knights had life. With back-to-back -back steals and layups, San Diego had the momentum, and the comfortable lead the Rams had slowly disappeared. The defense made their stops, and sophomore guard Marcus Brumsey, with a big rebound, took it the length of the court to put the Knights within five. Lays it up, lays it in, and one! Rumsey's got a whole different speed that we saw there. He literally pulled away from traffic. It was the final spark the Knights needed to get over what seemed to be a never-ending uphill battle. The Knights started to find their rhythm. They were forcing turnovers and had a total of eight steals in the second half, which ultimately brought them back in it. The big thing with us was our defense was like, got us going like our offense was you know that was our party but like our defense started the party so we got our momentum going and then once you get that going we get baskets we score we're a fast team in transitions and once the Knights were back in the shots started to fall again it kind of just goes back to to the brotherhood and how everyone believed in each other and how everyone wanted to see each other succeed and um, it just is like a momentum builder. It's like a snowball. Like as soon as like one person starts get starts going, then the next person starts going, then the next person starts going. 
With a big three-pointer, and Wonder Smith gave San Diego the lead. Fire from long range and hit! Oh my goodness! Wonder Smith is second big three in the second half. But the game wasn't over just yet. It was a seesaw battle in the last two minutes, but Smith was in the zone. There he was again, with the steal to tack on another two points. Collins loses the handle. Smith has it for the night. Smith in from the left. Left-handed layup is good. Mike just do it. But San Francisco came right back and put the game within one. Copeland, long three. That's good. Wow. Copeland now with six threes in the game. He has back to one point. Trying to get it to McLean and a foul called on Witt. Coming over the back there, so it'll be McLean again. 5.8 seconds remaining. Yeah, you should go right to the instant classic here. Yeah. So you Depending got, on what we see in the next six seconds. So situationally, if you're San Diego, the question is, do you foul with the three-point lead with the free throw in? Or do you switch and invert your defense and force them off the three-point line? They're going to show some pressure with 5.8. They get it to right. Can't afford to wait. Down to four seconds. Wright hesitating. He's at two seconds. They gave the foul. Smart play. He might get it a one tip. Wright's free throw is good. Okay, so mission accomplished. Now you have to miss on the left side. You, you don't want to go to the side of Wilborn. Misses high. They try to keep it alive. Still fighting, and that'll do it. San Diego City down 15 in the second half. The Knights came back and stole the victory against the defending state champions. It wasn't pretty, but with their 79-77 victory, San Diego punched their ticket to the state championship game. When it, we got down, when nobody nobody dropped their heads, nobody lowered their heads, it was all positive. And like, I think our fa family life mentality like really stuck to it, like telling everybody, like boosting everybody up, confidence. It's just, it was all about our confidence and we knew at that point nobody could stop us. But these guys answered the bell, you know, and that, that was a very special thing. Last year, I didn't really get to enjoy the experience of even going up to San Fran, so it was like, oh, we just beat the defending champions, and now we're in the championship. You know what I mean? It was like, thank God, you know, that we pulled it through. You know, everybody that played hard that game, man, it was crazy. It was crazy. The Knights arrived to what they had dreamed about from the beginning of the season. After two playoff wins, San Diego City College found themselves going up against a team that they had their eye on since November, the team that gave them the first loss of the season, Fullerton College. I don't think it could have been scripted any better in the sense of coming full circle. And they beat us by like, I think maybe 10, and that kind of was like a fuel to our fire for the rest of the season because we weren't expecting to lose ever on our home court. That was our only, our, our only loss. And Ever, ever since we found out we, they were in the Elite Eight just as well, that's the team we wanted to play from the beginning. Like, we've always wanted to play them ever since they took our own tournament championship. The crazy part about it, our coach, when we first lost them, our coach said, we will see them in the, we will see them in the playoffs. And it just happened to be seen them in the utmost championship of all. Man, like, we were so, I didn't go to bed until about like six in the morning. I was so like amped and hyped. So there's a bunch of emotion. Everybody was locked in, ready to go. It's fairly safe to say after two games here, San Diego City was down low on Lauderdale, spins into the lane, the hook shot is good. That is a pretty move down low by Wilborn. Our favorite inbounds play at the tournament. <laughs> Not working this time. Operated by a South School. Still a 5 0 lead for the Knights. McLean working the pick and roll to Wilborn, lays it in. That is textbook right there, and Lauderdale's going to have to adjust. Against Uber, they went down, I believe, 12 0. Yep, Hornets now into the zone defense. McLean, McLean. with a long three. And the Knights are really just beating Fullerton in every aspect of the game right now. They're executing better, they are shooting it better. Unlike their previous two games, San Diego got off to a 10-2 start. The Knights were in the rhythm offensively, from downtown and inside the paint. It quickly looked like things were going to get out of hand fast, but the Hornets were able to stay with it. I couldn't sit in the stands. I had to be walking around. I stood up on the top and I paced back and forth and I just, that, that's the kind of nervousness I get. Not, not nervous that they're going to, to not win, but just, I'm so excited I think more than nervous at that point. The atmosphere was ridiculous, but it was a lot of emotion. 
like a lot of a lot of scrapping, a lot of hard calls. There was a lot of chirping, you know, it was, it was the game within the game, you know, and them hitting shots and coming by talking about we're gonna get our ring, you know. So there was all this added motivation that led to it courtside and being in that moment for it to be just such an amazing experience. Peter with the high bounce. We've seen the strap in play many times. Yeah. Reeves to the bucket, gets a screen from Ross. That one blocked up top. Back the other way we come. Here's McCoy in transition. That's going to be a block. Oh, gosh. That's a terrible call. He when didn't take it in up. the chest. Yeah, the first 28, 30 minutes was a complete dogfight, honestly. Like, we were just going back and forth with him. And the Hornets were able to inch their way back in the game. And it didn't help that the Knights recorded eight turnovers in the first half, which allowed Fullerton College to eventually find the rhythm. Oh, no. Wow. Hence their fouling problem. But they do block quite a few shots. Yeah. Oh, a cheap one for Ross yeah. down low. Cuts it to a one-point lead. When it came to halftime and we saw where the we saw where the score was, we just didn't want to go home like with the L. So all we kept doing was like we would have players come in there, we'd be screaming at each other, like saying, like, yo, this is this is it. Like that's like, we didn't come this far like for nothing, you know? And it was just more so it was so euphoric because you can see everybody's emotion. You can see everybody's like Eyes pretty big, Coach Mitch locked in, all of our coaches locked in. It was just, it was just like, no, we're not going home with the L's. Baseline in a crowd, out to Anderson, around a box, he'll fire for three, in and out. Lauderdale on the offensive glass, back up, yes, and a foul. We were very confident coming in that teams might be able to hang around for 15 minutes, they might be able to hang around for 20, 30 minutes, but when it came down to that 40 minute game, um, we felt that we were more prepared coming into games that it would be tough for teams to play with us for 40 minutes. In the second half, the battle continued with both teams trading buckets. But this time, the Hornets had the edge. Ball by Reese to tap that one out. Hornets once again looking for the lead. McCoy picks up Fox in a switch. Fox with the runner oh. high off the glass. What a finish. We got one to go. That's, That's probably, stretch. yeah, and immediately San Diego into the run and jump. Reese in the open floor. Three on two inside, that's Ross with an iffy touch from 12 feet. We have McCoy, a violation on the inbounds. It's going to go back to the Hornets. This is going to be a four-point run here after a tie ball game at 38. We have a timeout taken by San Diego City College. The Knights, Coach Mitch Charlin, seeing that this one possibly getting away from such a crucial juncture in this ball game. Fullerton is a real good team. I said that since we first lost them. I knew they were, they were an elite team in California. The reason why we went down, we were having a little nervous feelings. Transition with numbers all the way to the rack to Ross, puts it up, Reese with the follow. 7 0 run. Keep an eye, this whole time keep in mind Kenny Barnes on the bench for the Hornets with foul trouble. That is not a good sign for San Diego when that gets corrected. That's a miss. And now the Hornets with a chance to go up by double digits on a three. Fox will bring it up. Ward's off the defender. He'll lay it up. No good. Tapped out. Lauderdale now with it out to Fox for three. Another one. No, it's off the back iron. He gets his own rebound, though. Another possession for the Hornets. Guys, the Hornets are winning every loose ball right now. Right now, City looks tired. City College. San Diego, I'll have to push off their offensive on Fox. He's done that a lot this weekend. I want to say that's the first time it's been called. We were down, I think, seven or eight points with five to play. And our guys, the same attitude. They, they weren't rattled. They didn't start pointing the finger. They weren't protecting their own egos. Like, that, that's what, you know, when things don't go your way, that's when you see self-preservation come out. And our guys didn't do that. They were, they were more together. They were more together in those moments. Games go up and down, so as time went on, they went up, we went down, it just and we knew at that point it was it was time to go. It was like we remembered what happened in the past. So uh, throughout our huddles, we we're talking about like we want this, we, we need it. In the middle, I'm bringing everybody together. I said we're not gonna lose. I promise you, we're not gonna lose this game. And then you know, once every once one person started getting into it, then I started getting into it, then we just started picking each other up, and then from there. So it's just all about playing basketball, knowing what we had to do, and just basically we having guts. Down by five, and the Knights found their spark from a big block by freshman Robert McCoy. Here we go for the Knights. McCoy brings it out to McLean, wide open from three. Yes! Darius!
and McLean gets it to a two-point deficit. We've talked about it, the shot blocking ability of the Knights comes through again. A couple of minutes ago, this was a seven point lead. It appeared to be all Hornets. What really helped was me and Darian just having that connection as we did. Like, he kind of fed off, we kind of fed off each other. And as you can see, the last couple plays were just me and him. They're like, he just made a three, then I hit a three. The Yale hit the lead back to the Knights. It's a 6 0 run. 3 20 to go in the final. Got Wilborn in the switch. That's exactly what he wants. Goes to the baseline, gets Wilborn in the air. Wide open, Dylan Reese from the corner. The lead back to the Hornets. Time out. And with the state championship title on the line, every play, every whistle, and every dribble suddenly had more meaning as the clock slowly ticked down. McLean drives the lane, tries to kick it back out. Wonder Smith freed up Noah McLean. Great closeout by Fox. Taylor drives the lane up and in. It's tied at 51. 11 seconds. No timeout called. Here comes Anderson. Are we smelling overtime? Hornets don't want it to travel. Four seconds to go. Here comes another timeout. A chance for San Diego to win it. We have four seconds left, man. What are we going to do? And we couldn't take it out on our side of the court. So it was like, ah, oh, we got to get the court down in, in four seconds. Coach drew up the play. We, we know that Darian's the fastest guy on our team, um, you know, top to bottom. So we knew he'd get up there fast. 4.1 seconds is a lot of time when it's just going one direction. So my goal and our team's goal was to get as close to the rim as possible to try to draw a foul. We just set it up to where if he gets in trouble, he has relief. So. It was set up to where we, Wonder, Rob, were just the outlet pass. I was sitting down on the bench at the time, we clicked the arms. And we just like, come on, yo, we gonna pull this through. You know, I inbounded it to him, I just watched him dribble up the court and... In my head, I'm like, oh, this dude finna get a shot off. I knew he was gonna get a shot off. But like, I don't know if he was gonna get a good shot or a bad shot, so... It takes about, I wanna say about six dribbles. I'm just over here looking the whole time, like, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen? They're going to take the ball out of McLean's hands, likely with the double team. There McClain, it is. McLean, here's the double hole drive all the way to the basket, flicks it up on the rim. That's it. San Diego with the upset at the buzzer. Darian McLean. Oh, my goodness. The celebration is on for San Diego City. Will Cowan, what a game. What started as a team goal before the season began became a reality in the last 4.1 seconds of the season. And with the buzzer beater victory, the Knights found themselves in the history books as the first San Diego team to win it all in 66 years. Uh, when I got the ball, it was like it was just a wide open lane to, to the rim, so it was one of the shots I just had to make. And it's just an unbelievable feeling, and it's crazy that it was for the state title. To be honest, I didn't know if he was going to drop it off or what because he was kind of like, I couldn't even see him to be honest because it was oh, some people and then I just see him like throw it up and then I just see the ball, I see the net move and I'm just like, ah, it went in and everything inside of us, like everything, like it just dropped and then it went drop and then it went back up like volcano and just erupted all of us on the court and it was just tears from there of happiness and like, yo, we did it. Like we did it. I never even thought it would be that situation, like hitting a game winner and that, like I thought we were gonna either win or it's gonna be a loss. It's never just like game winner. That's crazy. And it's crazy that it's me I and mean, it feels good. And couldn't have been it couldn't have done it without my team, you know? We all stuck together and we made sacrifices this year to get to where we needed to be. Man, it was just a blessing to see all that hard work pay off, you know. Great feeling. Uh, it's really indescribable to just win something, no matter what level you're at. To just win a championship is just one of the greatest feelings ever. They believed far, far sooner than I think the staff did. I mean, the first day they showed up and they're like, yeah, we're winning a state title. I mean, you know, they're, they're so young and naive, they don't know how hard it is. You know, they, they believed from day one. And the coaching staff, we. You know, we, we were all players and we've all been coaching for a long time, so we're like, all right, it, it takes a lot. And then it also takes some luck and it takes some good fortune. It takes a lot of things. Um, they, they believe from day one. The guys hung together. They Nothing slowed them down. 
they, if they fell back and fell behind a little bit, they would bounce back and really never lost their composure. So um, it was fantastic to see it, um, well deserved. All the, all the five losses every time, even though it would be a short drive from um, wherever tournament in San Diego back to here, it would always feel like the longest drive ever because the coaches would be so mad, we would be so down on ourselves. So if we were to have lost from, from San Francisco all the way back down to San Diego, it would have just been brutal. We've been counted out throughout the whole season, like even with the rankings, like we were ranked eighth seed going into the playoffs. And just to be number one, like nobody ever thought San Diego City was gonna be number one, finish up top. After we received our awards and everything and got back into the van, it was just party central the whole way back. State champs, San Diego City College Knights! Get over here, Darian. Woo, nice. Okay, so they gave you the ball, Darian, because apparently you're kind of fast. How did, it, how did that feel, man? I mean, you're living the dream. That's what everybody oh. wants, to do that buzzer beater for like, a champion. Do you champion. think about that at night when you go to bed? <laughs> oh like, my is God. it replay it over It replays over. over and over, over and over. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. My name is Nate Edwards from Spring Valley, New York. Yeah. And you're, you're holding the trophy. What's it like to hold a championship trophy? Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just everything. It's just all the ups and downs, just just everything. It's just, it still ain't even really hit me that we stay champs yet. Because once it hits me, it's going to really hit me that it's over with them. Like they said, we brothers. Like when it comes to cooking, eating, no matter what it is, we do it all together. Like, because we, we, we love each other. Like, ain't nobody else I would have rather go through this with than, than these 15 guys. It was uh, so incredible. Such an incredible year and, and such an incredible journey with these with this group of guys that they, they were so special um, I can't describe it a week after winning the state championship title the knights basketball team found themselves back in the gym but for a different reason Hosted by a local sports organization called Ball City SD, the Knights were out in the community helping young basketball players learn the fundamentals of the game. My favorite part was when we were doing, um, we, were trying to, we were trying to keep our balance when we were trying to shoot. And while the kids snapped some pictures with the state champions, they also developed their skills on the court and learned the importance of being an all-star student in the classroom. Why am I talking in circles? Okay. You gotta do the, you gotta take care of the foundation first. I think it was a real good opportunity to, to come here and teach the youth on how to make it, you know, not just in basketball, but in life as well too. And, uh, you know, cause it makes me think about my younger days and how I had older kids tell me what to do. So, you know, it was a real fun opportunity to come in, to, you know, to return that. Yeah, it was cool to visit and see the kids in San Diego, have their parents take the time out of their Sunday to have them come down here and learn with us and our coaching staff. It's pretty cool. They, I didn't think people seen City College as as, as leaders and, and, and role models. So it's pretty cool to have kids look up to us. It was really cool seeing when they made the the, the final shot in the championship. That was my favorite part. It was awesome. Yeah, it's it's kind of cool being able being able to go from the one being yelled at to being able to do the yelling. So it's kind of cool. So. I can see myself coaching when I get older. You know, after I get done playing. Right now, it's time to get a scholarship, though, so.
Following their championship season, the Knights went back into their school routine. Focused on graduating and training for next year, the days quickly turned into weeks. Everything seemed fine until one morning, the morning of April 18th, Uh, it was devastating. It was absolutely devastating. Uh, getting a call on the way into work at about 7 a.m. Uh, it, it was tough. It was tough news to swallow. That day was horrible. I got the text from coach and I just like sat there in front of my phone for like 20 minutes or something. Just didn't know what to do. It was probably about 7 in the morning and coach sends a group text to the team like basically saying like, yo, Nate is gone, but everybody gets to the gym and let's, and we gotta talk about this. And everybody was just in shock. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean Nate's gone? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, like, yeah, he killed himself. I'm like, what? The family lost one of their brothers. They lost a champion. Nate Edwards was gone. A victim of an illness that turns the brightest days into the darkest. The dark thoughts and pain from inside slowly crushed the life of a vibrant and caring father, brother, cousin, and son. It just hurt because he was always like the person to me that was so positive. And like, whenever I had a problem, he helped me through it. And I just feel bad because I can't help him do this. I wished that I, I could have talked to him one more time, and and then so I thought about, you know, the the pain he must have been in to 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 do that, you know, to take his own life. He must have been in incredible pain. Um, so I thought about him being in that pain, and I thought then I, then I thought about his his family and and his his young sons who adored him. So dealing with all of that was was heartbreaking to 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 come to terms with the with that kind of loss. You know, uh, I was devastated because uh, you know Nate was definitely one of the most outgoing people on our team, and you know, most vibrant people, person I ever met, you know, so when I found out the news, I was just devastated, like, you know, I couldn't believe it, you know, it, it was hard, it was hard, it was a hard time for all of us, you know, it was really emotional in the gym, everybody was in tears. Yeah, it was, it was tough, it was, especially just like the um, unawareness, uh, no signs or anything, so that, that was, that was really tough on us. Especially uh, the love we have for each other is real tough. I couldn't believe it at first, because then again, not only was Nate like a brother, he was like the heart and soul of our team, like honestly, because he, he was the one that like turned us up when we were down, you know, get in our ears and tell us like we're not playing hard enough. Um, he was one of the first people to get an offer and to, uh, to, to prepare to sign his letter of intent to go to Western Colorado. Um, you know, the more and more I thought about it, and the more and more, um, you know, I was so happy for him that you know, he had finally like accomplished his goal and overcame so much to be able to go to to school for free. You know, have a scholarship and everything. It just, I don't know. There's not not a lot to say about it. It's just, it's just really sad. And you know, um, something I just wish didn't have to happen. He taught me so much in like that short period of time. I don't have any brothers, and he's like definitely. I looked up to him as a. Uh, uh, older brother like I went to him with life advice all the time and it was more than basketball one time I remember uh, I was walking up to go to school and I had went we had I had ran into Nate and I was like he was like where you going I'm like, about to get something to eat at McDonald's and I was like, I only got two dollars though he was like man you want something to eat I'm like yeah I said I'm about to go to McDonald's I only got two dollars he's like do you do you want something to eat I'm like what are you talking about? He's like, bro, just call me if you want some meat. I'm like, all right, bet. So we walked down to the taco shop. He's like, get what you want, man. He got me whatever I wanted. So I was like, 
see, all right, bro, I'm, I'm messaging now, I'm messaging, you know what I'm saying? The, and the bigger the bigger picture of that is like, you know what I'm saying, he'll always look out for you, like, no matter what. Like, if he don't got it, he's gonna make sure that you he finds a way for you to get it, you know what I mean? Like, whatever you need, he'll go through, he'll go through hell and back, really, you know what I'm saying, just to get, just make sure you're all right. You know what I'm saying? We just met, and that's what it, that's the person he was throughout the whole season. We just had met at the beginning of the season, so I just know like if he was still here, he'll still be that person for life, like just taking care of everybody, making sure everybody's all right. On that painful morning, the angel was born. Heaven gained a champion, and with heavy hearts, Nate Edwards still lives through the memories and the love. A beautiful soul is never forgotten, and in the arms of God, a life will always live. The love will always shine. to the 2017 3C2A state champs. Thank you for your hard work and commitment. And thank you for loving me back almost as much as I love each of you. And uh, to the part that they will wait for, we got some uh, rings. What helped me frame it all was knowing how much Nate was all in on this program. I mean, he adored every guy in this program. He adored every coach and vice versa. We all adored him. Um, and he was all about this team. I mean, he, he would stay up all night thinking about it, talking about the, the team and to anybody that would listen, uh, what we needed to do. What, I mean, he, he was just so all in on this, on this brotherhood. Um, that that made it okay for me to celebrate that moment um, because I knew he was thrilled. He, he, and he would have been thrilled had he been with us. That, I mean, he would have been the happiest, he would have had the biggest smile out of it, he would have been the loudest, he would have been the most obnoxious, he would, he would have been the most boisterous in the group. And so that made it okay for me to celebrate that moment um, and, not, and not carry the grief. Steven, I get my eyebrows waxed every week. JJ Roberts. Last but not last but not least, we're gonna take a picture. Um, obviously, there's a member of our of our family that's not here. Uh, Mr. Nate Edwards, you know, and we'd like Amber to come up and, and accept his ring. Um, so it was it was special, and and again, I I don't look I don't look back on it with sadness because he would have been the most thrilled. I mean, he was the most thrilled. I mean, you know, and 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 then receiving those rings, he would have been the happiest. And so I, I hold on to those thoughts. The Knights got their championship ring, and now with the school year over, there was one more stage to cross for the sophomores moving on. He said we had I believe it was six, six of our eight sophomores got degrees. Uh, one of our sophomores already had a bachelor's degree. Uh, another one was completing requirements in the summer. Um, but we had a 
good group of our sophomores get degrees and that's what it's about, you know. Um, these guys having success in the classroom, on the court and in life. I remember dudes telling me specifically, if you go to City College, you won't be eligible, you won't be this, you won't be that. They're just gonna, Coach Mitch is gonna do this and do that, but you feel me? Huh. I, know, I felt like my time at City was great, you know? Two undefeated state, or uh, conference championships and a state title, bro, what? First time in San Diego, let me put that on there too, you know? That That's just like winning is watching our guys graduate, you know, I mean, um, it's it's such a, gosh, I mean, yeah, you're like a proud dad, you know, and, and the whole coaching staff, I mean, it's, it's emotional to watch your guys, you know, not only win it, but then they're, they're moving on, you know, to, to fulfill their dreams. I mean, that's their, that's their dream is to, to graduate and, and hopefully receive a, an athletic scholarship to, to play at the next level and, and see where that might take them and get their get their bachelor's degree and, and move on from there. And with their championship smiles and with heavy hearts, there is only one way for the Knights to spend their summer break. The hardest thing about winning a championship is, is, is the next year because um, hopefully no one comes in thinking that it's easy or thinking it's going to be a cakewalk or thinking like the last year team did it. We don't have to work hard and, and we'll do it too. No, we got to work even harder because there's teams working harder, if not hard, working as hard or if not harder than us to win just like we did. So, With a new season on the horizon, the team added new family members. And just like the year before, the Knights are ready for it to begin. Knowing what they did last year, with winning the championship and having that feeling in high school, I never really I got the feeling of winning CIF or getting a ring with my brother. So I always wanted to have that feeling. That was uh, a big factor on me coming here, wanting to repeat that and do that again, which is even better. I, I feel like I can, like me and my fellow returners, we can just take all the freshmen and new beginners under our wing, you know, show them how Coach Mitch is and how things are expected to be done, instilling that culture as a team, making, giving ourselves that night identity. Our team's gonna be definitely different. Um, a lot of people can can shoot, so we got a lot of shooters on the team, which is gonna be good, because the lane's gonna be wide open. Um, and then I think that we have a lot of, uh, you know, hungry, um, talented players that are, that are coming in and we're just gonna kind of get right back to the same thing just doing it a little bit differently. But definitely trying to go back to back and definitely trying to um, you know, make history in that way too. Um, Cause you know, that's the only thing we can do going forward at this point. I love being on that team that everybody's looking at, looking to beat, one to beat, because I want, I want to play everybody giving their best shot, giving their all, just to beat us. I just love that feeling. Cause it just motivates me to just show them that they can't and they won't.
coach. You said you was going to win one, coach. I thought you wanted to come back. You said you was going to win one, coach.